Um, welcome. Happy Friday, Tyson, mate. Good to have you here. Trent. Thanks, Tyson. I'll grab that one. Daryl, good to see you too, man. Hey, guys, welcome to today's uh, masterclass, which is going to be an incredibly interesting one for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, but let me give you the background to it and let me give you a bit of a sense as to why I really wanted to run a, a masterclass covering this topic and why I chose uh, the person I'm going to speak to today to, to run it with. So, First, for those of you who are listening to this on the podcast, um, w- let's talk about what a licensee is. Because in Australia, under the the, the, the rules and regulations of, of, of um, the Corporations Act, in order to provide financial advice, you need to be licensed. Now, in order to do that, you, there's two options. You can either go out and apply for your own Australian financial services license and become what they call self-licensed. Or alternatively, you can come under the license of, of an existing uh, licensee. In other words, you become an authorized representative. In other words, if you want to give advice in Australia, you need to be either part of a licensee or you need to have your own license. It's kind of a really important part of the fabric. But I think um, whenever I think about licensing, I always know that there are always extremes of, of businesses. There's businesses who have gone and worked with licensees and, and, and it works for them. And then there's I've had businesses on the program where to say they went to war with the licensee is probably underestimating it. And I've always looked at it and gone, what is it about the fact that certain businesses are able to work with their licensee better and others just don't manage to get traction? And often the case, it's in what the businesses do and how they approach it, which is why I really wanted to have a, have this kind of conversation and dive into what is it that licensees do that maybe people aren't aware of and how, what's the best way to work with them uh, over time? Martin, welcome. Um, but in addition... The role of the licensee has changed so enormously. I mean, in the last five years, it's changed hugely. But uh, in the 20 years I've been in the industry, I mean, it has it, it, it has really transformed. So I wanted to have a conversation with somebody who could give real insight into that transformation, as well as maybe a bit of a talk about where it's going to go. And as I started to think about who's the best person to have this conversation with, I thought I needed someone who not, not just has, has seen the industry from the licensee perspective, but has has seen it from multiple different perspectives. Um, and when I when I sort of dived into it and I thought about the kind of person I, I wanted to talk to, I realized that the person I needed to talk to was someone I knew very, very well, which is Rachel. Um, Rachel has had roles in the industry from so many different angles. She's been in uh, investment banking. She's been in funds management. She's worked in, in, in uh, for product providers. She's worked product provider servicing licensees. She's worked on software rollouts across three or four different licensees at once. Uh, she's worked in turnkey teams. She's been an advisor. Uh, she's worked in the insurance space. And now she works for Affinia, who I think are one of the more progressive licensees out there. So in the sense of getting an understanding of, of how you could work better, with a licensee. And, and maybe for those of you who've come along because you'd like to get more out of your licensee relationship, you'd like to understand a little bit more about what goes under the bonnet. I, I think Rachel was by far the best person to talk to. So that's a bit of an overview, but I'd love to know from you. Andrew, welcome. Corinne, Daryl, Elisa, welcome. Michael, hey, can you do me a favor? Firstly, just, just go over to the chat box and let me know that uh, you can hear me and the audio is right and all that sort of stuff. And while you're there, can you tell me what's the main reason you've come along to, uh, to this session today. What's the main question you want to ask or, or the thing that you want to fix or the insight you want to get? So I can, I can sort of uh, ask the right questions along the way. Pop over to the chat box and let me know. Uh, someone's in the Q&A, which is totally fine, but uh, research, Daryl's fair enough. That makes a lot of sense. Audio for a video, fine. Corinne, awesome. P- hear me perfectly. Sounds like there's a bit of a delay on the chat. Let me know the specific thing that's brought you here today so I can ask the right questions. Perfect, Daryl. I appreciate that, man. I've got research. Michael's here because he wants research as well. What was brought you here today? Once I've got a bit of a sense of why people are here and what you want to know, we'll kick this off for real. Let me know. Chat box. Martin, would love to know what's brought you here today. Beautiful, Tyson. I'm finding my licensee to be an anchor as opposed to an enabler of helping clients. Beautiful. We're going to talk about that today because, um, you know, I think one thing I've taken from talking to Rachel in advance of this is I actually think 
the, the, the teams you work with in the licensee and you want the same thing. You want to be able to go out there and work with clients efficiently and effectively and grow sustainable and really good businesses. The challenge is in getting on the same page is the best way to do that. And I think when you're aligned and you can be doing working together, ultimately, if you're both aiming at the same thing, you get the same outcome. But I, I get the sense that, you know, sometimes that's a bit challenging. Trent, him is, here's us well. I'm looking for a licensee's view of the relationship and what their gripes are with advisors. I don't know if we're going to get gripes, but I definitely think we'll get constructive views on how uh, things could be done better and maybe the rationale for, for why it doesn't go well. Corinne says, insight to the issues that are most important to AFSLs at the moment. Beautiful. Okay, we've got some stuff to work on there. And guys, along the way, please jump in. If there's a question you want to put on the table, if there's something you want to hear or something you want to stand on, this is the opportunity because this is very much an interactive thing. All right. Without any further delay, let's let's uh, let's bring Rachel up. How are you? Are you there, Rach? I Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? How are you this morning? Yeah, super. Thanks. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, let's just jump into it. Can we do a bit of rapport? But I, thank I, I, I'd like I, to yeah. say thank you for the uh, the intro. You pumped my tires up quite a lot. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's 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 all true though. It's absolutely yeah. all of it true. You know what? I could, I could I usually start these things with a bit of what do you have for breakfast or what are you wearing or or where are you? But all of those questions are kind of I'm just going to assume that we know that, and so let's just jump into it. look. Um, for those who don't know you or don't know a little bit about what you do, can you give us the kind of high-level background about your role, uh, yourself, and and sort of the kind of businesses you work with? Sure. Um, my role, I'm what's called an Affinia Business Coach, or ABC for short, so it's nice and easy to remember. Um, yep. we're, I'm, a, I'm a PM at Affinia, so and I look after New South Wales. i um, been here over three and a half years, and um, I mainly my practices are mainly, well, I work with one man bands through to larger corporates. I look after two yep. larger corporates. Um, but when I say one man bands, these guys are pretty mature as far as business is concerned. Um, that's the type of business we we suit more. Where we're not a, a licensee f- for startups. So yeah, so, then, I'm lucky I get to work these types of businesses. Very 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 varied. And it's typically you you main work mainly in New South Wales. I look after New South Wales, and I've also now looking after Queensland. Oh, nice. Okay. Get to go up there every now and again. That works pretty well. <laughs> so um, we sp- I spoke at the beginning, you've done a pretty wide range of roles, which is quite amazing for a 28-year-old. So <laughs> like, to what to what did you, do you attribute that? I mean, yeah, you've you kind of seen it from every single angle and that's pretty unusual. How did that come about? I uh, was well, started off with a science degree um, and I was getting a little fed up with it. I was four, uh, three years into a four-year science degree and just didn't see how I was sick of having no money and I was like, oh, I'm going to go work in financial services because in finance, that's where you make loads of money. Um, <clears throat> since I realized that's actually not true. There's a lot of money in financial services, but us uh, in financial services don't earn, I think it's tech these days. That's anyway, tech, um, <laughs> property, property development and business. Property, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the money yeah. So, um, but I wouldn't change anything. Like I wouldn't do it again because it evolved into something which I love and I've got a, a huge passion for. So as I started um, my my journey was with uh, Chase Manhattan Bank in uh, global custody, and I got a temp role um, as an EA to one of the head, the head guy um, who headed it up at that time, and um, then fell into an admin role there and progressed through to investment banking, um, to wealth management, then in, at JP Morgan, and then wealth management outside of that. Um, and then when I, when I hit MLC, that's when I. I really started to learn about the industry and I knew that I, at this point I wanted to be working with financial advisors. Yep. Um, eventually became a financial advisor myself but through various different roles but um, and, and then into self-employed land where I worked with this business coaching firm. I don't know if any of you, anyone's heard of it. <laughs> um, learned through, a lot. Yeah, through now working um, at Affinia. So it's been a really, really amazing transition through all of these and I've got a pretty good knowledge across a few different licensees working at them um, as well as the rest of the industry. So you kind of put bits and pieces of the puzzle together um, yep. and it enables you to have a bit of a view of where you think it may head as well. And you were also involved, I know for a fact, obviously, but you were on the Advice Central rollout. So you were, you were out there <laughs> all over the country rolling out software. Yeah. and that was amazing. I learned a lot. And <sighs> I, I learned a lot about how, the, how, the, how a business ticks from beginning to sort of that beginning to end process as well with a, um, seeing a client all the way through because you had yep. to have get around their whole back office experience and then, you know, what that cl- front end client experience was as well. So, yeah, that was, that was a, that was a good, that were good times. It's interesting because you often, you sometimes get 
people who have their primary, their experiences come and working in institutions. They understand that bit of it. And then you get people whose primary experience has been working, you know, in, at the coalface or with practices or in practices. And it's not, it's not that often you get somebody who's kind of split their time pretty 50-50, yeah. which is where I think you, 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 get, you get a bit of an empathy for both sides of the sword, which is why yeah. I wanted to have this conversation. Well, working in the small business, then all of a sudden you get an appreciation for how many different hats a business owner is wearing at any one time. And mm. anyone who runs their own business, I've got an absolute lot of time for you because it's this. <laughs> yeah. It's That's cute. good to hear. <laughs> Bodes well for the future. Um, we were talking earlier about how much the industry's evolved. And I know we were both at MLC around about the same time. And the proposition that MLC had back in the day is literally up to that point, people would go in and ask for 10% of an advisor book or 20%. And MLC would go in and go, give us 100%. We'll bring it onto the platform. We'll put this business system in place. And then we'll, you can go and play golf three days a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, how do you see how, how the, the role of the licensee has evolved? I think, it, look, in, with my experience, that was around for a while. And it actually probably kind of is to a certain extent now with some of the the um, larger institutions. But, I mean, I was in a team at, at MLC which was responsible, it was sat under sales, but we worked with the PDMs and it was responsible for turning a business a business's book, an yeah. advisor's book, all across to the platforms and, and their life insurance as well. So we wanted everything. Yeah. Um, and then um, when I worked in another licensee, We'd have Monday morning, and this wasn't that long ago, we have Monday morning meetings where we'd pull data from the advice software to make sure that the advisors within this massive licensee were writing the product, which was aligned. So, yeah. And that, you know, that's all in recent history, but right where we are now is I can't even imagine that being part of what we speak about. It, no. where it just does not even come into conversation. The product discussion is not there. It's, I, remember, I remember working for, um, doing some work for, for a major um, a company, a large, large institution that bought another company, and they were, they were shocked to find that the licensee the, or the advisors were less likely to write the product of the, only, of the company who owned them because they didn't want to be perceived there was any, any, any um, you know, conflict whatsoever. They were actually over, overextending. Yeah, look, and I, so I just probably mention in here, a lot of the stuff I'm saying is my personal experience and my... And my opinions, like they don't form opinions or experiences through uh, from the company I work for, which is a Finia who's owned by Tal and Daichi Life as our big parent. So yeah, it's it's me here as me. That's all I wanted to say. Yep, I, I, I was supposed to say that. In, I was <laughs> yeah. supposed to say that in the intro. I completely forgot to mention yes, that. But yeah, you were. <laughs> any views expressed are Rachel's, not uh, Finia's or Tal's. Yeah. So. Yes. So uh, can we go back to that question? Yeah. So there's been a real evolution. With, um, like it's, it's just completely flicked. I mean, I remember when we were at MLC, there was this whole push to run the licensees as a business and they had a crack at it for three years and yeah. they never quite managed to get to a point where they're profitable because there was, it was so, they were so intertwined with the product side of things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these days, the, um, I, I know that a, a fin a licensees are not run well, the ones I'm involved, not run to to make. We're not a, we're not a public company. Yeah. We pass the cost of of delivering what we deliver onto the advisor, um, yeah. and we keep it as low as we possibly can. So the the times where we have to put out fees are when we have things like PI go up, or um, when you know obviously the it's not a part of the fee, but it's what we pass on, which is the ASIC levy, which is you know due to be going up as well. So you know it's, it, this is why we try and keep the fees to a Three yep. really jumps to as low as we possibly can because the industry just throws price hikes at us regardless. So let's let's talk about licensee services and let's get into the nuts and bolts of it because um, there must be certain things that you've noticed that um, are becoming increasingly needed or requested by advisors. Mm. There must be there's probably some other things that potentially. Um, uh, are, are not needed or, or less in demand, and certain certain other things that that have just changed. Yeah. What, what do you look at in terms of that evolution? I I think at the moment, like the hot topics that are really coming up with the practices I work closer with are, I mean, I, I don't think it's ever gone away, but it's a bit more of a focus at the moment. It's, very, it's getting a, um, really efficient with very specific parts of their process. So whether, look, I've got a practice that he just, he's struggling with his, art, his, his review process and that's what he wants to pull out, yep. get better at. Um, but I think, I mean, 
the real focus is over the past few years has really been embedding any of all the leg and reg changes that have come through and um, work, we've been working really closely with our, our advisors to, to make sure that those are embedded into their processes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's ongoing. We still obviously have to work closely with our monitoring and supervision area, our professional standards compliance area, to make yep. sure that our advisors are doing all of that. Yep. Um, and that's where our team will come in and, you know, make sure that they're not only efficient, but, you know, we've got to have an understanding of the, of the, of the reg stuff, which, you know, they need to have in their processes as well. So one of the things that often comes up in conversations is when you've got um, legislation that comes out mm. and it tends to be quite... Um, Principles based. That's the whole thing we're talking about. Principles based legislation, mm. or um, and then it's the job of the licensee to kind of interpret that into, you know, what you actually do. And you were mentioning that a lot of the license, a lot of advisors, they're, they're having these conversations with you and they're saying, "Look, I, I don't want to know all of the what ifs. I want you to tell me how should I do it." Yeah. Look, as the feedback we got during mainly during the the rollout of all that Royal Commission. Um, changes was was and it, look the advisors are in overload and i get it like all of the study um and all yeah. of the all of that was coming down the pike as well as where we're going okay you need to do all of this stuff you need to change all of this and we had limited time that to get them to implement as well but they mm. what that what we we got feedback um from our group was like can you guys um just tell us how to do it like it's great knowing all this information yeah but they're on overload. So they've gone, just tell us how to do what we need to do in our businesses. And that's it. Um, and that was a bit of an eye opener. So, um, you know, and I feel that we've, we've gone down that path and we've almost gone even further now. We've got, we're, we're simplifying things. So we embedded regular leg changes and obviously all licensees have got to put their risk. There's a, there's a portion on top of that as well, which is a licensee, um, I guess, um, interpretation yeah. and it takes into account risk and a whole of other different things so we had to put on a bit extra which we are now going back and as a it's a whole project across the whole licensee where we're simplifying everything yeah, yeah, yeah. we're rolling back um all the documents like how can we strip things back how, how can we make this as as close to what is required as as possible now we've embedded everything and we've learned let's make it simple for our practices. And that's going on. It's an ongoing project, which, which is going to last about a year. Is this something you see as being a, an industry trend? Because I'm getting a sense that over the last six months, everybody's gone, oh, well, let's just strip, strip it back. Or, yeah. or is this something, yeah. I think, so. I think so. And people also, they, they are, and I think as well, what's been a bit of an industry trend or a trend across the industry and my, my advisors as well, is everyone seems to be wanting to, and I feel this is not simplifying things some, for some practices that they're, they're getting very pro, pro, um, focused on, on, on tech. Um, yeah. That's for me uh, something I've noticed a lot. And, you know, instead of, I think so, like some of my advisors have implemented some, some great tech and mm. um, had it working within their teams and it's, and it's streamlining and it's working. And I think sometimes others are implementing things which aren't simplifying anything for them um so, so what's, yeah, that's a bit of a focus as well for us <laughs> let's talk about that because what's Finian's approach to technology do you have a, a a body of tech like that's our tech or do you have a kind of a bit of more of an open open to architecture or do you kind of have you know this is the core tech and you allow bits to be plugged into the on the sides oh, we had a we've had a bit of an evolution in, internally um with this so when i joined it was pretty much okay ever anyone can join with anything now while that is still the case we 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 support x plan as far as um we have a group who uploads all of our we, looks after our wizards who looks after all of our documents and does all of that stuff so it's x plan is probably where the majority of our advisors will be um okay. yeah however we do have some others who who will be um using other tools such as you know advisor logic and midwinter and pluto soft there's a okay. out there but having said that, we've also got advisors that have gone, okay, how can we utilize X Plan more effectively? Um, it's not doing some of the things I want it to do. So I'll use certain tools like um, Astute Wheel and yep. Advice Revolution and My Prosperity. And there's a, there's a range of other tools out there. Um, and we've got some good relationships with those tech providers. Um, and we've actually had them present into, into um, our group um, on a tech week that we've run. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it was really good, really well received. Um, how do you know when a practice is 
you know, the, the overcomplicating it. What are the because you see a lot of practices? How how do you hone in and go? Yep, these guys are overcooking the cake. I guess it, when you've spoken to them about their goals and what they're wanting to achieve, and when all of a sudden they start diverting off and making kind of veering away from um, uh, anything that would help them get to that goal, then yep. I think that's you know that's overcooking it for the year. Um, also, when I think when you're seeing advisors flick in and out of major software, um, yep. I think that is so disruptive and I honestly don't understand how, how a practice can run ef- efficiently when you haven't got your processes and you've, you've been really strategic about the approach. Right. I've got, don't get me wrong, I've got practices which have been really strategic about um, big software changes and it's been working really well. But- as, in pl- as in planning it out and taking the time, is that what you mean? Yeah, planning out their process, working on their process first. Yeah. As opposed planning to coming out, out, yeah, planning out the implementation and who in their in their business is going to be responsible for different parts of the of the rollout. Gotcha. Okay. And what I'm going to want to get into in, in just a minute is I want to talk about you know Tyson touched upon it as well as um, Trent is like there's certain practices that just don't work well with licensees and 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 vice versa. Which is as I said at the beginning, it's weird because if you get down to the core objective of of both parties to efficiently run businesses and service clients really, really well, but sometimes it gets a disconnect. But I wanted to talk about, there's obviously a wide range of services that you guys provide. Hmm. Do all of your practices use you and the business in the same way or do, do people pick and choose different elements of it? They can't really pick and choose our professional standards uh, or our um, <laughs> clients area. <laughs> right. So that's a given. Um, yep. The way that those guys interact with our um our planners, you know, they have a, a year. We've got a pretty good framework now. We've worked on, um, and so they will. It's like a coaching relationship where it's there's files that get reviewed, but you know, if it's everything's good, you know, they won't get reviewed now again for a year. Right. Um, but we have other other checks and balances along the way, and they've got access to to our team to make sure that they are being compliant. But I think where the area advisors and practices pick and choose is sort of my team as far as the business planning and stuff is concerned. Um, and it's hard to pick really because you have some planners and practices which have engaged an external business coach but also engage you to help them with certain parts of their practice. But then you've yeah. got others which I think some planners just don't really go, they don't look for help at all. Right. And, and, yep. That's you know, fair. They're, not, they're not looking for help from from me or my team, but they're also not looking externally. Um, so I think those type of practices may just be like it's obviously not personal because they just don't they see that they they don't need the help. Um, Even though it's available to them. Yeah. Yeah. They still don't no, take it. No, but I mean that's fine. I mean, but people, some of, I mean, my role is varied. Like I'm just, a, I, I can just be just a conduit between. The, the licensee and the practice to make sure that everything's communicating smoothly and everyone yeah. knows what's going on, or we can get in and actually pull pull processes apart, um, you know, help with tech rollouts, um, do some business planning, you know, keep everyone on track for the year and really talk about that stuff. So it's it's fairly varied. How, what, how what percentage of your panel or across the panel would you say really engage with that sort of stuff versus just, just don't? Varying degree. Uh, look, it's probably about 50% of, my group will want the heavy, like, you know, full business yeah. planning. And I think after that you've got, don't not saying they're not engaged because they are exceptionally engaged, um, but they'll be very self-directed and they'll do a lot of that themselves. Um, but they share a lot mm. of that back in. So we yeah. can make sure we're working together um, and we'll work on different things. Um, <laughs> you know, one of my, one of my practices were at um, our conference in Hamilton Island in May, um, came up to me and gave me the biggest hug <laughs> and said, yeah, I know. And I mean, I love a hug. I'm a hugger. You are a hugger, yeah. <laughs> That's true. They, just, they said, thank you so much. You are the, and they've been around a while. They're one of my, my bigger practices. I said, thank you so much for being the most amazing PDM we've ever had. And I was just like, I'm, thank you. But, you know, and I, you know what? I probably should ask them what I do, but I, I don't well, do was. planning with them. They, they, are, they do all that themselves, but they, they think I'm amazing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. <laughs> Let's let's talk about the the kind of challenges and the and the gripes thing. So, um, one of the things I really wanted to dive into is, um, uh, like Tyson mentioned, he's finding his license to be a bit of an anchor as opposed to an enabler of helping clients 
when what are the some of the biggest challenges you see when when um you're looking out at a practice who who feel like there's an anchor going on and you kind of see it differently what what, what's, what what from your perspective is going on there a lot of the time and it won't be the same for everyone but you must uh, say there's some common issues there oh uh, look we had a lot of this when when we were starting to introduce a lot of the the changes um i think it, it's really hard to explain why this needs to, to happen. And it's, it's, you know, why is because it's, it's the law and we're trying to, mm. like we say, uh, it's, a, it's a saying within our, our group, everyone's on the hook for the other. So yeah. Marcus O'Sullivan will stand up and say, if one of our practices doesn't comply by this, we're all of our li- livelihoods are at stake. And that's across yeah. the staff and across all the other practices. Yeah, That's kind of that. But I mean, some lot, there's a lot of, I've actually been privy to some conversations recently where I've spoken to some practices about joining um, our group and they were sharing with me some of the extra steps that they're asked and yeah. the meant to jump through. And it's really delaying, um, it really delays and puts barriers up for them actually just delivering and getting things out in a timely manner. Yeah. At the end of the day, you've got a client sitting here waiting and it just it just stuffs up client experience. Yeah. Um, so it's that's one thing we've got to be so mindful of. It's it's funny because um you've got a situation where as a licensee you want to help businesses to be efficient and find better ways of doing things. Uh, but on the flip side, you've also been as you said, you get the situation where if one practice goes goes rogue or whatever, suddenly Potentially, it's going to disrupt everyone. I mean, Dover is probably a really good example okay. because when we were working together, we had a practice that was in Dover. We had another one who was has an ex client who was in Dover, and I remember when they they announced they were closing the dealer group on the on the Thursday, and they literally just before um, Easter long weekend. And next thing you know, boom, they these everybody's looking for something, and that the was problem fun. was. It was full on because someone like Elizabeth, who who was yeah. a, she is a great advisor, ethical. Yeah. We had Nathan, who was he came out of a, a UBS. These go, they were seriously good advisors, and a lot of the groups out there would, the, as soon as they were getting a knock on the door of Dover, no, no, no. It was like it was like a it was like a cruise ship in the pandemic. Nobody yeah. wanted to dock it, and it, and and it kind of brought home to me that. Um, when you are part of a licensee, it's 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 kind of trying to get that 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 narrow channel between between the two areas. That's what's really key. It's huge. It's such a it's such a um, juggling act, and licensees actually, um, you know, what you may not realize in the background, um, you know, on a on a week almost weekly basis, our asset could be in contact, you know, wanting to follow up on stuff. It's like it's it's nothing that people should be worried or or. Yep scared about but this is the nature of our regulator i mean they're out there they're doing this to self-license firms as well you know but the beauty of a licensee is we 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 look at that and we've got we're lucky because we've got a great legal team we've got we've got great infrastructure that sits in behind and sort of um we we have access to so we we just we we run with it and we just go with it and uh, and we sort it out and i don't think i don't think um and and we don't want practices feeling that Mm. because people would just panic it's 100%. You, know, you know, and I think being self licensed, if you know, if you know, that's the way you want to go, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and it's going to be amazing for some practices, but they're the things you're going to have to be aware of and that, that you're going to deal with at, a, at, at your licensee level. Um, and you're going to have to not freak out about it and just work with the regulator. I was, I was, I was, can, I, can I ask two questions? So I, I know, um, I know from speaking to a number of different people, when ASIC asks for information, they tend to ask for a lot of information in a very short time frame mm-hmm. and then they're gone for a long period of time yeah. and then yeah. they come they come back in a, and they go out for a whole bunch of information in a really yeah. short time frame so it can be really stressful which is we were talking about record keeping and it's much when there's no yeah. record keeping it's as good as no records but on the uh, flip side do you think that what's happened over the last um few years has has left advice businesses maybe overly spooked yeah 100 they really are like I get it. And, and even now when we come to, to file audit time and Tyson, yeah, professional standards are our... Um, um, are I'll, our, I'll, I'll pull those out in a second because they're good okay. questions. Yeah. All right. So, so even when it comes to file review time, advisors are, are freaking out. And we're, you know, it's, it's everyone's on edge. So that, yeah. they, they, I mean, it's just because they want to do the right thing. Yep. No one wants to be, no one wants to be doing the wrong thing. Everyone wants to be doing the right thing. And this <laughs> is what we're, we're working alongside advisors to, to do. But Look, it, there is so much now. There's so much now when you talk about certain changes that have come through recently that 
you know, make our sick, you know, more and more sort of in the forefront of conversation. Yeah. It has spooked devices and it, you know, but this is why we're here as a licensee. We, we deal with it. Yeah. So Tyson's point and some good ones is the context that he feels like it can be an anchor and maybe you can give some insight into this. Maybe you can, you know, he says, he, his pro- problem is sometimes there are professional standards that are issued, which is supposedly best practice, but there's no tools to support the standard or they it's really hard to implement. What's your take on that? Okay. Um, I think, no, I, I, well, that's the shame I'm, I'm, that you haven't got the tools or the support to to help with that because I don't know how you would do it. Um, I Yeah, I, I'd probably like to hear a little not... bit more about that to understand. Fair enough. Yeah. The um, other one I- it's yep. talking about where you know where your licensees are mandate technology which works for them internally, but isn't as good as external offerings out there. Yeah, totally. Look, we don't mandate um, we don't mandate tech. We prefer X Plan, and there's a bunch of reasons there. I mean, we we were supporting quite a few platforms which were actually uh, inferior, and a hundred I have hundred percent guarantee they're inferior to X Plan. Yep. And what it was, it was just causing it was a lot of work on us to make sure we're supporting and, and you know, making sure the wizards are working for all these different um, platforms out there. And we just gone, no, we need to pick one that we prefer, yeah. which is next plan, and we work closely with it. We don't have an internal system. We, we ask that it's managed by an external company for us and our advisors will, will either join that, that hosted site or they, they can go direct to X plan if they want. Um, they just don't get the level of support that they would get from that person. Yep. Um, but mandating tech, it just depends on like some advisors love that. They want to they want to be told this is what your tech is and yep. this is how you use it, and you can't go outside of that. I, 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 I kind of feel I kind of feel like I remember I was at um Hill Ross Dow, you know what I'm talking about here, when they mandated coin for the whole of the AMP network, and I was mm. sitting there looking at it. No disrespect to coin, but it just wasn't as good a tool and it was proven that way. So yeah, I mean, I think I think that's going to be the. My feeling is that the bigger the organisation, the bigger the group you're with, the more likely they're going to push technology out there, which is easier for them to control rather than technology that's better for you. It's a bit of a risk, um, but what we've actually said is, look, if you want to go down the path, we've written a policy around it. Like, if you yeah. want to go down the path of of using this, then you just have to understand that you have to be. When we make a change, you just have to be all over that change, and that you work with your PDM or, or ABC on that. All over that change and make sure you're implementing those changes in your in your software so through into your advice docs and stuff we were talking about situations um without mentioning any that specifics where you get pushback from advisors on the regulations mm-hmm. but those advisors haven't actually read the regulations or haven't actually looked into it how much of a problem is this for you from your perspective when you're when you're trying to sort of coach practices i look can i I'm going to blow our trumpet a little bit, to be honest, because we, and and also most of the advisors have read regulations now because of the of all the exams everyone's had to sit. So if everyone had to get all over, the code, all over the code, but we actually had a really good education um, program that we pulled all of our advisors through and everyone did really well. So it's just trying to get everyone all over those. those yeah. changes. It, look, I think there are advisors out there who don't understand the court. some out there that don't have, probably don't understand. You can, yeah, you can that. argue. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm. I, I think we're really um we're, we're really lucky here at Affinia that we're, the way we've handled it. I don't, actually don't come across that too much internally. Um, but I've had conversations out in other forums, um, where you do gather that when people are, are whinging and moaning about things, and you're actually like, have you have you read the? Have you actually read it? Yeah. <laughs> But I guess, maybe, maybe it's becoming less and less of an issue. Maybe the, the, we're, we're moving away from it, and there's more and more advisors who are actually picking up the the press releases when they're coming out, or they're they maybe being better informed out there, and they're they're, they're coming at it from, you know, like sounds like t- t- um, for example, Tyson. It sounds like you you you're quite on top of certain personal standards and the tools that are needed to do it. So yeah, yeah, that's um that's an interesting one to yeah. to hear. I mean, once I mean, I mean, like what you have to understand when when all these these changes and sometimes the changes would come along and they'd go, actually, no, no, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to make this change. And so, the whole way your licensee is moving to implement this change and then roll it out is like, oh, okay, now we need to go back, change it. So when the tool the tools may have been a bit slower from I don't know who you're licensed through and that, that, mm. that doesn't matter, but maybe those tools were a little bit slower to come out to to support. Maybe. 
things, but if if I was an advisor or an advice business, and I was pretty confident that the way I wanted to do things was um, compliant and more efficient and and better than the way it was currently being recommended. What would you recommend as the best way to approach having that conversation with the licensee? And conversely, what would you recommend as being the worst possible way of doing it? Sorry, can you just say that all that again? <laughs> so let's say I'm an advice business, right? Yeah. And I've gone, you know what? There's a better way to do uh, our fact finding. There's a better way to do the FSG or there's a better way to do some element or there's a better way to put together our annual annual yeah. agreement. So there's a better way of, of, yeah. of doing the data gathering or whatever yeah. it might be. And I want to get, I want to present this to my licensee and I want them to look at it and go, you know what, you're right. We're going to change the, 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 the framework that we operate in. Mm. There's two ways you can approach that. You can either go and pick the fight and just bang your head up against the wall and upset everybody, or you can do it in a way that gets people, you know, you get traction you get, and you get change. Like if you were in that advisor's sh- uh, shoes and you wanted to do, you wanted to approach that, what would you, what would you recommend they do and don't do? I would recommend you work very closely with your PDM because your PDM is the one that understands the practice. Like, look, don't get me wrong. Everyone in a licensee understands advisors, but the ones that are dealing with advisors and, the, uh, and un- would understand most about the challenges and why those, why you would need those changes within any of the documents or any of your, anything is, is your PDM. Um, so that's the sort of stuff which I work on um, quite closely. Look, to be honest, we've got when we roll something out, we will ask for feedback, um, and we've got a pretty open policy, like uh, as far as uh, yep. where we are, as far as advisors contacting really anyone. Even Marcus takes calls from most of our network, um, but you know we we've got the head of research. He um, he is at the moment taking feedback on on a new SOA that we've rolled out, um, and it really depends on, on your licensee, but if there's stuff which is already BAU and you think it could work better and yeah. if you not only want to implement that in your, on your documents, mm. you would think it would, um, and you'd have to go through that sign off process. But yep. you know, what you may find is if you are suggesting that back and through, and if it's something which is really awesome, which has happened to me a few times recently, yep. then, we, then the licensee may go, actually, that's a really good idea. Let's roll that out across. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do advice businesses who really get the best from their licensee do that other businesses don't? Communicate. Just be really like really get in, and get involved with what, what the licensee is putting on for you. So um, when you say when you say communicate, like like are we talking a certain frequency you should, you know? Yeah, look, to- if you if you're offered some help or you're offered um a sort of engagement point, take it. Um, if you're offered to jump in on a peer group, yeah, jump in head first, and the, my better practices are the ones that do that. Yeah, they, I was gu- yeah. I was going to ask you earlier: is there a correlation between those who do the fifty percent who do engage and the success they have versus the, those that don't? There is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. And look, I've got most of my practices are really engaged. There's a few which, for their own probably maybe personal things that are going on, the, the yeah. engagement is not there. Um, but yeah, look, definitely it's, and it, your licensee, they put on a conference, they put on a PD day, they put on a peer group, they put on um, like a tech session, they're running like a week of, like we, we this is all the sort of stuff I'm, I'm, that we would run, just get involved, um, you know, and yeah, don't kind of don't be a passenger with the whole thing. If there's, um, you can put your hand up to be involved sometimes with, with yeah specific things that like, uh, maybe advisor councils and things as well, like. It's a really nice thing to have. Like, I, you know, we've got an advisor council and those guys actually um, sit across the whole country and any yep. decision, big decision which gets made gets run through the, that group of um, advisors. Yep. And, um, yeah, that's um, really awesome for our engagement as well. Nice. Let's talk about where we're headed. There's a lot of change going on. And I mean, what do you see as being, to, to grab Corinne's question, what are the most important issues to AFSL's at the moment, what do you see as the big ticket items that you guys are grappling with? Uh, probably, uh, I think would be. I mean, now we've come through the back of through the Royal Commission. I think there's, you know, I think now we're at this sort of this point where we're like, well, what's going to happen with the um, the, the uh, review which is coming out in December? Well, like, the advice review, yeah, yeah, like. Because we are all, we were all systems go for this 
um, simplification project. We're rolling mm. it out. And now we've had to kind of go, hang on, let's just stop because all of this direction we <laughs> were taking and make to make things simpler, w- what does this mean after December? It, know, it, after, it, so. it, feel, it feels so much like, do you remember when FOFA came out? Mm. And it was like this deadline to get things done and deadlines to the porting. And they just kept delaying the, the legislation. So you had all these people going, well, we've got to build this stuff, but we can't build anything until it comes out. And that that's kind of, we always seem to be a little bit behind the eight people in terms of direction and then implementation. This seems to be a really short time frame. Yeah, I think um, licensees, though, I mean, I mean, advisor numbers are dropping everywhere. Um, yeah. You know, there's advisor movement around the place. There's more advisors that are going to roll off at the end of 2025. Um, you know, we've got, and I guess it's it's not just a licensee problem. It's an industry-wide issue. Um, mm. But, you know, what's going to happen as advisor numbers continue to drop? Because there's only a certain amount of advisors out there. So, we, you know, where we're, we're playing that is a bit a little more strategic where we're looking at long-term growth as opposed to yeah we're recruiting and we're really we're bringing new practices on board yeah um however we've got a professional um professional year program which we developed over the past couple of years and we've had quite a few advisors roll out of that yeah so we're looking at that as a bit of a strategy now okay let, let's not only help our practices grow and and get these um awesome young advisors through but let's also look at that from a like a growth um strategy for us yeah. Um, because we'll, you know, we, we'll grow, uh, our practices will grow and get stronger and get really good advisors working with them, which is so hard right now for them. It is. I was going to say, well, I know there's there's at least two people on, on the call who um, resourcing has been a real issue. Oh. When you look across all of the practices, both the ones you, you manage and the ones that, um, you know, within the network, is everybody struggling with this or are some people dealing with it a little bit better? Some people are dealing with it a little better, but I think... This um, is the resourcing, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Uh, yeah, some people are dealing with it a little bit better. But look, I was speaking to one of my advisors the other day. Um, actually, it was probably about three or four months ago, and he needed um, a client service person. Yeah. And he said when he put this out, this same role out a couple of years ago, he had 800 people apply because it was a yeah. city, you know, and he, he, he looks after his staff. He's a good firm. Um, but he had like nine people apply for this role. Uh, and that is, so this is what, and this is what we're dealing with. And an advi- an advisor numbers are even more scarce. I get advisors asking me every week, can we, can you help me find some staff? Can you help me find um, advisors? Who's out there? And look, sometimes we can help because we know that there's movement around the place. Around the place. Okay. And other times you just use your channels, you use LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Um what about, all, all, all all roles within what about outsourcing how much how many like how prevalent is that in the network how how supportive are you guys of it oh look we've got a lot of people that use outsourcing from it's just as simple as um onshore power planning services to and they can pretty much use you know um any good any of the good well-known services and um to external um offshore philippine uh some like Philippines, India. Philippines. Yeah. yeah, we've got practices using um, virtual business partners. We've got them using, um, there's one called Hammerjack. There's a few others out Hammerjack. there. Hammerjack. Hammerjack, yeah. That sounds like a cider. Yeah. So <laughs> um, that's, yeah, cider sounds nice. Is it too early? <laughs> but you may, maybe a little bit too early. But, um, okay, so so outsourcing is working for a lot of practices, but you you guys are kind of see the growth are coming from professional year programs, which is why you've implemented it. Well, yeah, I mean it's uh, outsourcing would be more your would be more your support roles. The professional yeah, yeah. the professional year program is is pulling um, the next generation of advisors and 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 it looks some firms are looking at um, their succession plans at the moment. Yep, and they've got people working in their practice. And they have been for some time and they think this is the person I, who's going to be my succession plan and they're working together. And then they're going to be doing a PY, a professional year program through through us. So, yeah, it's it, I'm getting a lot of queries through at the moment. Um, for externally as well, advisors who are wanting to to join, asking about our professional year program. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's a good one. Yep. I want to ask two questions. First one is if you're in a, if you're a practice – and this isn't just inside your network and you're struggling to work with your licensee. You know, you're, you're butting heads. 
you're arguing, whatever it might be. What's the mm-hmm. what what is the best advice you can you can offer to, to if if somebody I mean obviously the the answer to it is if you if you really is not working, go and find a new licensee. But if someone's like, I don't want to do that, I want to fix the relationship, what would you recommend? Um where would you start? I'd start by I mean again I'm look, I'm gonna be a little biased here because this is my role, but um <sighs> I think that's something that your PDN's really got to work on with you. Right. Um, look, you're gonna have you're gonna have you're gonna have that, and a lot of the time, it it could be that it's nothing to do with the licensee and nothing to do with the relationship. It's got to be something else that's going on in this this advisor's life, mm. um, which could be creating some creating some um, some friction. Um, but I think it would be just sitting down one on sitting down one on one and, and actually talking through what those issues issues are. And if it's going to be something which you, you, we're all adults, if it's going to be something which is you're never going to um, we're never going to see eye to eye on, or it's 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 something which is an expectation thing, like you know you're not yeah, yeah. yeah you know maybe maybe it is time to to look elsewhere, um, but you can't do it the right way, like. Yeah. S- you know, sit down and, and and kind of have have a real grown up discussion with the person who you've got the best relationship with. Now, if your relationship's absolutely gone, you don't and the tr- there's no trust. Well, that's a hard, that's a different one altogether. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And similarly, if if it's, sometimes it's really hard when you and you would see it um, when you engage with a business and they want to come on board, you've obviously got a bit of a template, you know what you're looking for, yep. but you don't never really know until you, you you get working together what's actually the truth. And mm. similarly, for a lot of advisors, they're looking at all these these licensee relationships, they're looking at the current one, it's not working. Do I go with this guy, this guy, and this guy? Yeah. What do you think are the biggest indicators of, of whether a, a licensee uh, advice practice relationship is going to work? Oh, from my perspective, it's um, look looking at in, in past in past experience, the relationships which haven't worked, um, I, if I can take it from that direction, are ones which um, think that they think that um, you know they don't really want to do or jump through the compliance hoops, and they they want they they find it too much, yeah, um, and they want to go self licensed. That from there, that's kind of, and I've had one who wanted to do that. Um, single plan a firm um, who who went down that path because he didn't agree with our 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 standards and our interpretation. Yeah, um, I th- that would be a, a red flag if you if you're not up with if you're not up with the the way that they're going to monitor and supervise you and that they're not going to change that. No, they're know? not and because like we mentioned before, everyone's on the hook for for everyone. So. And, the, and I think yeah. the, the more diverse the network, the more people in the network, the more spread out the network, the, the, you know, the fewer people that you've got to manage it, the less likely you're going to get any bend on it. Yeah, look, that well, that's true. You are catering for the the one who probably is going to be the least compliant. You, you are pulling them up and through that. Um, but that's the beauty of where we are now and with the, the quality which we've got and our supervision where we've got, and that's why we can simplify but yeah, if you haven't got that framework there. It is it, as a licensee. Yeah, it's, it's got the co- the complex processes are going to continually be rolled out um, because they are ch- trying to cover that risk. It used to be. It wasn't that long ago that you used to get lot some certain businesses that would hop from licensee to licensee to licensee. You know what I'm talking about? I remember that those days. Does that happen anymore? No, I don't know. It's too it's too much to change. But licensees used to throw money at at um, practices. Did, yeah. I remember a group. That shall go unnamed. And I used to, when I was a BDM, I worked with as a life, I was a life insurance BDM, and I there was this this group of advisors that would conglomerate and move from licensee to licensee, and the licensees would just throw money at them. That those days are gone. <laughs> yeah, I look. I remember at a place that I worked, we had uh, one of our big practices who um, got a, got off quite a significant offer to jump and they jumped to this other licensee, but they left all their business on, on the in-house platform. <laughs> and it was a, the, during that year, the actual profitability of that practice to the, to the network skyrocketed because yeah. they, they were still, the business was still getting all the revenue from the investments, but they weren't yeah. having to actually manage them. So those days have gone too. <laughs> those days have absolutely changed. Um, uh, let's talk about this self-licensing thing because I just wanted to jump in on a point. I remember uh, I, I ran a, a webinar some 
uh, actually a few years ago now, but we were talking about this this self-licensing thing. And I heard it explained about nine months ago. Self-licensing is basically you telling um, the regulator that you are comfortable interpreting the regulations um. and essentially underwriting your own compliance. And that's if you are conf- so confident in the way you should do, you're going to do things that you are you know, 100% your manager, you'll do the record keeping. In other words, you are totally convinced that what you're doing is completely legal and you will monitor everything. You self-licensing may be the right option for you. Yeah. But on the flip- yeah, totally. Totally. But on the flip side, I'm I mean, you remember Jeff, right? Jeff, after he we'd had a whole conversation, he just went, I don't have the head for that. I don't have the attention to detail. I don't want to have to man- to think about it. And I think in that moment he realized that that wasn't the route he needed to go. He didn't want to do self-licensing. He wanted to be able to to outsource the worrying and the monitoring of that. And I think that is probably one of the best definitions uh, I've seen of the benefit of being, you know, if you want to go self-licensed and you're comfortable, bang. Yeah. But if, you, if you're not comfortable, you don't want the headache, then finding a, finding a licensee is, is a good way of offsetting that and, and realizing that, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to follow the, 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 the pathway, if that makes I'm sense. The bouncing ball, like, you know, and obviously it's, um, it's a two-way street, and as you know, is was mentioned earlier, you can come in and 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 have some in, uh, input into um, you know some of the things that get rolled out. But it was actually interesting. One of my practices recently said to me, "He's like, I'll never go self-license," and it, it came up in conversation. I can't remember the context. I'm like, oh, "Okay," and he goes, "He said, I just see it as a conflict. Like I'm an advisor and I'm a licensee. Like that's a conflict." I was like, hmm, "I never thought of it that way before." I haven't but, thought of it that way. Yeah, so um, in his mind, that's that's was that's how it was. So, yeah, I, I thought it was an interesting. See, that is an interesting viewpoint. And then I go on to the thing about just because it could be a conflict, that doesn't mean it is a conflict. No, so no, 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 no. That's, that's a whole a other. Kind of- yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Let's leave that one alone. End of three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, I, look, I'd love to just check in with everybody. Can you do me a favor? I'm gonna. I, I want to chat a bit more about sort of where it's going to go but i'm mindful we've we've been we've been at this for for a, it's been a, i've really enjoyed it can you just head over to the chat box what's one thing you've you've really taken the discussion it's maybe clarified something for you maybe you've got insight into something it's confirmed something you already knew pop it in the chat box and just let me know where you're at what's been going on and similarly is there any questions that you want me to ask before we we just jump into this bit about sort of where it's headed because there's a lot of interesting stuff coming up but yeah, do me a favor, just head over to the chat and I'm going to pull a couple out there. But I'd love to know, as you know, I need it. I'm, I have this above average need for feedback. Um, so I'd love to know. You like that line, do you? It's good. Yeah. Um, what I, you t- I think uh, Michael's still on the line. He'll realize that I'm. The, he, he said to me, I'm the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I can't believe I forgot to do the, um, the, the disclaimer. But yeah, I'd love to know. Pop over. Uh, thoughts confirmed, said Daryl. Hmm, that's Ooh, interesting. It's oh. cryptic. <laughs> yeah, that is. Conf- oh, Trent's confirmed self-licensing isn't for us. Um, yeah, look, I, do you know what? I would tend to think, Trent, I would, I would, knowing sort of where you're at, and I would say at the moment, I th- that's the other thing I think is self-license. There is the, if you lose resources and you're self-licensed, it, it has a bit of a double whammy because suddenly you're trying to manage that and everything else uh, on top of it as well. So... Uh, Corinne says the importance of communication and participation with the licensee. Actually, that's one thing. I know when you came out and you said it, it seemed like so simple. But then when I, d- I thought more about it when we were talking, yeah, if, you're, if you don't have that kind of open communication, particularly with you know, your BDM, then you're, you're, the whole conduit between you and the licensee, that whole insight of what's going on, the rationale, the why, the how, the, yeah. the, what other people, you just cut off from it. Mm-hmm. And it kind of got me thinking about that you could, you could have a look at and diagnose the reasons why um, practices don't indulge that or they don't use that. It could be anything from just pure rage and anger or resentment to they don't rate it as highly a priority or, you know, they're stuck solving the problems that they don't realize that yeah. someone else has always solved. It's it's a hard one because, you know, there's a lot going And if you've already kind of stepped out of that engagement and you're not, you're not really leaning into the licensee because the licensee mm. will off, will be leaning into you probably too hard sometimes, but it's, you know. True. Um, yeah. But if you're not leaning in, you might miss out on some of the awesome things like, you know, programs that are being developed or um, just other stuff outside of the le- the legs and the regs and, and the business policies that are, that are being rolled out through, like, like, new business coaching frameworks and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's, cool. um, and as Martin says, the value of a PDM, you know what? 
It's true. The value of a good, like I personally, when I've done coaching, the times I've enjoyed it most is when there's a, there's a really good PDM involved because it means that we can do the coaching, but we can always also can turn around to the PDM and go, well, do you, how would you do this? Can we do this? Can we sign it off? Totally. And we just, we cut it all in one place. It, it's always worked really, really well. I'd um, love if all my practices had a, had an outside business coach as well. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'd love it if all your practices had an outside business coach as well. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although that that would be an, that would be interesting, I think we'd end up seeing way too much of each other. No, no, I'm not saying it has to be you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to go downstairs now. Um, <laughs> let's let's sort of finish. I want to finish on two things. Firstly, there's been a lot of talk about self licensing. There's been a lot of talk about simplification. There's been a lot of talk about you know the the licensee offer being deconstructed. Where do you see it headed? Five years time, where do you see the licensee? Oh, I think big look- question. Yeah, it is. And look, a lot of people, look, I've been flipping around on this one for, for a bit. Like I did a podcast with AFA and they actually asked the same thing. Um, and at the time, my opinion, I think was, look, it, it, advisors are going to be direct. Um, look, we're still going to be around. I'm not sure. But I honestly feel with everything that's going on and everything that's continually going on, we're here for a while. Yeah. Now, it's whether you think there'll be direct sort of, thing later um uh, we're going to be here as long as we've got the legislation and the corpse act and we've got the the code and the and all of the changes that seem to continue we're here well, I think uh, for, you know for me this, uh, this individual licensing is interesting but the fundamental thing that needs to enable it there needs to be a body who's willing and, uh, and, and comfortable managing it like yeah like they do in the, uh, the you know in law and i don't see asic having any appetite for doing that. And I don't see any other body in the industry anywhere near the level of resourcing or capability or, or to do it. So I think individual licensing is, is an interesting one to go down. I don't think yeah. it'll, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't fundamentally change the need to get services around compliance from, from a place. But yeah, um, I, I just don't think our industry is never, it's not, it's not radical enough to evolve that quickly. No, 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 I, I agree. I think we'll be around and look, the way we work with our advisors may change. Um, we may be more focused on, um, you know, you know, whatever if it would be, you know, business transformation or, or whatever it would be, but yeah. licensee, it's continually evolving as the industry evolves and it, and it moves and it, you know, it, it, it navigates it with you. So I've got a question from John. Uh, if there's any others, by the way, guys, pop them in if I haven't answered them, but um because of I noticed the time. If someone wanted to had a question off the back of this, or they wanted to see something specific, or challenge you on something, or alternatively, yep. they wanted to talk a little bit more about what you do and potentially get your advice on you know moving licensees or improving. How would they connect with you? Okay, um, you well, you can contact me on my email. I've got it on my mobile. Um, anything, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm open to anyone asking any what's, questions. What's the best today? avenue? So I just give them the uh, your address. Yeah, give me your email address. Yeah. Okay, so it's Rachel. You can give my phone number as well. That's fine. My I don't. I just see. I don't know your phone number. I just have it in my. You got my personal um, number. Which, I can. Oops, so. not Rachel. Got here. It's um. <laughs> yeah, I've just got my wife or Rachel works. So yeah. So I'll give you um. Well, um, Affinia. Uh, that right? Affinia. dot com. dot au. And if you prefer phone. Oh four, four three nine. Yes, one one six four nine one. One one six four nine one. Beautiful. Okay. 0439 Love it. Hey, guys and girls, thank you so much for coming today. I'm just going to finish off. If there's any other questions, we'll, we'll get them in. No problem, Trent. Um, tr- uh, uh, John's question was, what's Affinia's practice on foundation statements of advice? Mm. Look, we've had to, we've changed tack a bit on this recently. Um, is this in relation to when you've finished, uh, you, so you're joining another licensee and you're write, rewriting Advice. Why don't we? Why don't we uh, give? Uh, no worries. Uh, thank you very much, Tyson. Let me do. Let me see if I can get John's uh, microphone on. Ah, oh, John's gone. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. Um, I don't know. I mean, guess. I guess the question might be that when someone comes across, you have to issue a uh, do. You know, I'm, I'm guessing it's issuing an SOA immediately. Not immediately. No. Okay. Cool. No. No. We're very reasonable in what we we require and look. 
we have a, a team which which transition in the advise in the practices and then work through all the requirements um our vice coaching area um cool. and they work through um when a, a foundation the ways need to be done but when they are done the practices that i've worked with we give them what happens over the course of the year as the practice reviews that client they will review the client they will do an so new soa um they'll do the risk tolerance questionnaire and then bring this bring that in line with our strategic asset allocation so it's all kind of and then bring it on to our um, affinia agreement so it's just a, a an evolution across a year Beautiful. Um, Martin, in answer to your question, I don't see why you wouldn't reach out to Rachel and have a conversation about that. And I'll, I'll brief her about what, what, what that's all about. I think she already knows a little bit about it. Rachel? Yeah. <laughs> you do? Okay. Thank you so much for, for your time today. It, it's, been, it's actually been really enjoyable having this conversation. I wanted to do it because I think the, the insight you've got is so valuable from both sides. And I think that's what's come out today. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, for having, thank you for having me. Any final thoughts? From me yeah no from the person behind you <laughs> no thank you for this um you look it's made me realize you know how how passionate i am about about licensees and what i do still and I'm, yeah thank you um no worries at all. if anyone wants to reach out look feel free i'm um, yep. i'm pretty i'm pretty approachable she's a hugger <laughs> I you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Hi, everybody, have a great weekend. I hope you. We're, we're we're teeing up for quite a nice weekend of sun here. So hopefully, wherever you are, you're getting the same thing. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. <laughs> See ya. Bye.